common bases here. No, no, you can't. You can't do anything with that. So you'd still be taking a logarithm of both sides. So that, that step's still the same exact thing. However, when you look at your exponent, can you see what you're moving to the front of your logarithm now? Is it simply the x? No. What are you going to move? Okay, so you move the whole thing. That whole entire exponent has to move to the front, no matter what it is. It could look nasty, right? But as long as you know that that's an exponent and you have a logarithm now, whatever this expression is, that whole thing moves to the front of your logarithm, whatever it is. So we're going to get an x minus 1, log of 5 equals log of 9. Now I've made one pretty major mistake here. What's the mistake that I've made? I've omitted something that I need. Yeah, you absolutely have to have the parentheses because you're multiplying that entire exponent. So that's kind of important. Not kind of. That's really important. You all right with this one so far? Now, what are you going to do? Not divide by x minus 1 because that would put an x underneath that. that that's going to be real bad. We want to get the x by itself. Now, you, you have options. One of them is not a good option. One option is distribute. You don't want to distribute. You don't want to distribute. What you want to do is still get rid of the log of 5. How do you get rid of that log of 5 if it's being multiplied? Divide both sides. Just divide it. It's the same exact steps. Same exact thing. So notice if I divide by log of 5, it's still going to be simplified out of that expression. You still all right with that? So now I'm, what am I going to get on the left-hand side? equals log of 9 over log of 5. Am I done? No. There's only one more thing I have to do. What's that one more thing? Add one to both sides. The one is just going to be tacked on to the very end of your expression, okay? So you're going to add one here. We'll get x equals log of 9 over log of 5 and then plus 1. There's no way to make it look nicer. All right? the, the, you could use the change of base in reverse and get log base 5 of 9, but that wouldn't help you because you couldn't plug it in a calculator to approximate it. That's about as good as we can make it. That, that's it. Would you raise your hand if you feel okay with these three examples? Good. All right. All right. Guess what? That's as far as we go on solving exponentials because now you know how to do every single exponential. If you can find, there's only two cases. Either you find common bases, you know how to do that, or you can't. Now you know how to do that. The next thing we've got to do is look at how to solve some logarithmic equations. Now, what do you suppose is going to happen here? If we need logarithms to solve exponentials, what do we need to solve logarithms? Exponentials. We need exponentials. Right? We need one to solve the other. Notice how we had to have logarithms here. We had to have them. If we didn't have logarithms, you couldn't solve that because logarithms are the inverse to an exponential. Exponentials are the inverse to logarithms. You've got to have that in order to solve it. If you just look at that, that you're, you're not going to really, if, unless you spend a lot of time thinking about it in your head, you're probably not going to be able to solve that very easily. However, if we use the fact that we can write this as an exponential, if you're good at that, this becomes a pretty easy problem. So let's, let's check it out. So the first thing we're going to do with our logarithms, right off the bat, if you see a logarithmic equation, you are going to write it as an exponential. So let's try. Why don't we write that as an exponential? Can you tell me, ladies and gentlemen, what is your base here? Four. Good. What is your exponent? What do you think? Two. Two. So we should know that this can be written four to the second power equals equals how much? Yeah, remember those parentheses are important, right? Saying what's inside of our logarithm. X minus two. You okay getting that far? Maybe. We practice that a lot, right? A lot. Let's just solve it. Let's go. What, what's 4 squared? 16. So we're just going to write 16. Can you solve that for x? Yes. Add 2 and you're done. Hey, we just solved the logarithm. Is it really, really hard? No, not really. You just have to remember that you need exponentials for it and be able to write the exponential appropriately. After that, 
it pretty much falls into place. I mean, we can square numbers, we can add, subtract, we can solve basic equations. You just need to remember that we have to absolutely have either common bases or logarithms for exponentials, and you have to have exponentials for logarithms. Let's go ahead and do, uh, do one on your own here. Okay, let's, let's look back at this. Of course, we have a logarithm. There's not much we can do unless we know what an exponential is. We've got to write it as an exponential. So you should have done 2 to the 5th equals x minus 1. Did you make it that far? Yes. yes. Good deal. How much is 2 to the 5th? Okay, don't make the quick mistake of giving me 10. All right, don't just multiply those in your head. It's easy to do on a test. You're just going really fast. You go, oh, yeah, 10. Uh, don't do that. I mean, that'd be a, a real good way to screw up an easy problem, okay? So we're going to go ahead and write 32 here equals x minus 1, we'll add the 1, x equals 33. Yes, no? Yes. Well, now, now this problem is a little bit different. This problem has two logarithms on one side of the equation and then a number on the other side. It looks a little bit different than these ones. These were, were one logarithm already, yeah? Mm -hmm. So is there something we could do, though, to this side of our equation to make it one logarithm. You see, you, you can't do this process unless you have exactly one logarithm equal to a number. That's what you have to have. So right here, th this is messing this up. Notice how I have those two logarithms, right? You'd be like, okay, yeah, well, 6 to the first power equals, but you'd have nothing to equal because you have those two different logarithms there, two logarithms. Can you put them together? Yes. Yes. That's why we study those properties. How do you put together a log plus a log with the same base? Good. So I could do log base 6 still. Of, is it x plus this or times this? Times. Right. Now you have one logarithm. What's your base? 6. Okay. Now I'll, I'll let you do something right here if you want. You can distribute now. Just rewrite it with distrib distribute or you can distribute later. It really doesn't matter. Uh, where you do the distribution, ultimately you're going to be distributing. So, I'm sorry, what was your base again? Six. Six to what power? First power. The first, so six to the first power equals what? X squared plus x. Sure, you, that whole entire expression, right? So we're going to get, I'm going to write it like that just for now, just so you see where it's exactly coming from. We've got six to the first equals inside, just like two to the five equaled that expression right there. Ladies and gentlemen, are you okay with that so far? Mm -hmm. So same idea. How much is 6 to the first? 6. On the right-hand side, sure I can distribute. That's x squared plus x. Oh my gosh, do you see it? Do you see it? What do you have? You got, what, what's up there that should tell you exactly what to do here? x squared. Our nemesis from the, even before this class began. Didn't I tell you, if you, if you didn't know how to factor, you ain't gonna pass this class? <laughs> it's everywhere, it's everywhere. That x squared should say something to you. It should tell you exactly what to do right now. What are you supposed to do right now? I gotta get zero on one side, because we're gonna be factoring or using the quadratic formula. So if I subtract six, I get zero equals x squared plus x minus six. Why are we doing that? Because we need to know how to factor that or use quadratic formula, and the, the way to do both is to have zero on one side. So after you get your x squared, we need to know, hey, don't get stuck here. Man, the, the, you, you, know all this, you know this stuff, right? This is old stuff. This is the new stuff. If you can make it down to here, finish it off strong. You're going to try to factor first. If you can't factor in 10 seconds, then use quadratic formula. Can you factor that one? Yes. So this is 0 equals probably something like plus 3 minus 2, yeah? Mm -hmm. Are you done? No. 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 What do you do now? 
Good. So we know x equals negative 3 and x equals 2. We're starting to really wrap everything together in these, in these chapters now, in these sections. It's using a lot of old stuff. So we have logarithm properties combining logs. We've got exponential property, making sure we know how to write that as exponential. That's not too bad. That's exactly what we did over here. After that, you can ignore this. This is just a simple equation. 6 to the first is 1. Distribute. That's an x squared. x squared, say get everything to one side and 0 on the other side. Make sure your x squared is positive. Make sure your x squared is positive. That way you can factor pretty easily in most cases. Set each one equal to 0. We get by the zero product property. Solve each one down. We get negative 3 and we get 2. So far so good? Now, this is an important piece for you. Plug these numbers in. If you plug in 2, you get 2 and you get 3. Yes? If you plug in negative 3, you get negative 3 and you get negative 2. There's one thing about logarithms that you need to know. The inside of a logarithm can never be negative. The inside of a logarithm. So which one of these things does not work? Negative, negative 3 does not work. Okay, 2 is okay. Negative 3 does not work. Not simply because it's a negative, but after I plug it in, the inside of my logarithm is still negative. Does that make sense? So don't just arbitrarily cross out any negative numbers that you have. I'm saying that explicitly. Don't just cross out any negatives that you have. You have to think about it and plug it in. Because if I had like 4 minus x and 5, 5 plus x, neither of those would be negative. They would both be positive. They would both be solutions. Are you with me on that? So don't just cross them out because they're negative. Cross them out because when you plug it in, the inside of the logarithm is negative. There's a difference there. So that's a solution, but that one's not. Logs cannot be negative. So our ideas here are we're going to write these as one logarithm first and then as an exponential. Second note, the inside of a log cannot be negative. That might eliminate some solutions for you. Okay, I'd like you to try one on your own up here. It's really similar, just make sure you can handle it. Go ahead and solve that. Similar problem. Bless you. 